Learning about what lies underneath the sea and how to protect it is worth the investment because it, it can make our lives better too. That's the philosophy that's underlying the Underwater Cultural Heritage Project. And this morning, I want to check in with two uh, trainees in the project. Chike Pilgrim, who's an archaeologist and a trainee from Trinidad and Tobago, and Jacinth Simpson, who's an assistant lecturer and a trainer trainee in the Underwater Archaeology Program as well, representing from Jamaica. Good morning to you both and welcome to the Now Morning Show. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, let me start with you, Justin. Can you give us a, a basic idea as to what the Underwater Archaeology Project is all about? Okay, so the Underwater Archaeology Project is about a shipwreck that is in the Rockley Bay or the Scarborough Harbor area. Um, it was a wreck that happened in... 1677, and what um, happened was that the government or the, the Kingdom of the Netherlands, they decided to assist in um, providing assistance to build capacity within the region. And so we have a number of participants from Mexico, from Panama, from Trinidad and Tobago here, GK. Um, from Jamaica, a lot of us who are here to learn more about underwater archaeology. Um, we did a, several dives on the site, and I guess um, we can talk more about that. But that's what? basically what the project is about, building awareness and building capacity. All right, well, let me get into some, more, some of that building awareness and capacity. Chike, are you still with us here? Yes, but I'm blurred. I don't understand why you, you need to check the you need to check your vision, put on the glasses on the computer so we could see you properly. But maybe you can still hear you. And <laughs> That's you can, all right, man. You can yeah, tell us no about, about the process by which you, you would have started learning more about the shipwreck and how to be able to access it. Chike, you still with us? Yes, I'm still with you. All right. So we can hear you, but we can't see you. Um, so you can you can no still problem. tell us, you know, how, how you got involved in the project and uh, some of the, the practices that you would have learned during this particular exp ex expedition? Well, basically, uh, a friend of mine sent me the application. A UNESCO call went out for people that were archaeologists, and they were asking people from the region to be involved in uh, this program. So if you were, uh, previously had some diving experience, and you were, uh, of course, an archaeologist like I am, you know, they thought it would be a good idea that you should apply. So I applied, and... Uh, thankfully, I got through. And tell me about what you what you learned in the process. The, 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 what what changed, or, or what was the the new things that you would have learned as an archaeologist that going on doing those dives? Yeah, well, basically for me, uh, what I learned was they taught us how to set up things like uh, how to run surveys under the water. Um, safe practices while you are conducting a survey or an excavation under the water. Uh, a number of other things like, uh, you know, doing different types of scans and searches under the water for artifacts. So it was a really, really interesting and exciting program. Yeah. Let me jump back across to Jacinth for a moment. Uh, Jacinth, tell me about, about what you guys discovered while underwater, while going out on those dives. Okay, so... Um, going on, on those dives, we discovered there are several canons that are located in the area, as well as you have um, there's an anchor. The site was previously investigated, and so what the team tried to do was to actually find some of those canons. At first, we saw like two or three, and then as the dive continued over a period, we found um, at least seven or eight of them, as well as an anchor. Um, we also found uh, it's uh, it's not an onion wine bottle; it's an olive olive wine bottle um, okay. that was also discovered in the area. That's kind of very interesting. And do you guys like extract the the things that you find, or you, you leave them there? You just observe them and, and take pictures and that kind of thing. Well, no. Um, at this time, we're not removing any. We have done surveys. We have um, taken measurements and done um, photograph of them as well as we have done photogrammetry that is using 3D model to of some of the canons just to see 
what they would look like, the complete um, object. Yeah. And in terms of, all right, so we, we have this, this particular shipwreck that is underwater in Tobago. But after learning about these practices and how to go about exploring the underwater cultural heritage, do we have plans to further the, some of those things in different Caribbean islands and see what else is below the water? Yes, that is the aim of um, the, most of the participants here. For us, it um, we have very few, if any, underwater archaeologists in, in our islands. For us in Jamaica, our only underwater archaeologist retired about seven years ago, and we're wow. trying to build capacity in that area. So this training will definitely benefit the region, um, and I'm hoping that we'll, we'll take back a lot of what we have learned here. We're also, one of the things we want to do is to see how it is that we can also manage the program. Since we have been able to dive the site, how is it that we can um, look at some of the issues affecting the site and to, to mitigate against some of those issues? Ah, so the idea is also to preserve the site to make it uh, accessible to others. I'm hoping so, that that will be eventually the, the decision of um, to be to the Pigo uh, authorities. Yeah, that's very, very interesting because, you know, we never think about underwater tourism in that aspect of things. We always think about, you know, the, the beach itself and the fun parts of it, but we don't ever think about the history that may lie below. So I applaud you guys and the work that you've been doing. I understand that there's a, a graduation ceremony and presentation happening today. Yes, we're having that today. Um, today is the, the final, almost the final day of the program. We'll be having presentations. Um, the participants um, will be making posters to present as well as management plans. And we're hoping that, you know, we'll have a good day today. We have been here for three weeks. Um, we enjoyed being here in Tobago to enjoy the culture, the food. And we just hope that, you know, we'll have a good time today. Well, I'm happy to hear that you enjoyed both the culture and the food across in Tobago and that you've been having a great time as such. Um, in terms of the presentations, you mentioned people making posters and management plans. This is for the shipwreck in particular? Yes, this is for the shipwreck in particular. Okay, so the, the idea is to present ways that, that you can preserve the heritage or ways that we can do what exactly? Um, how we can manage it, how we can put better management strategies in place. Um, basically, that how, how it is that the history of the site, um, how to, to mitigate against some of the, the, the things that we see there. One of the days we dive, you know, there are days when you have very clear days, you are able to see the site completely. And there are other days when because of uh, whether it's a current or whether because of the, the cruise ship coming into the harbor, we are not able to see the site as clearly. So um, we'll give suggestion as mitigation actions, how it is that we protect this site for future generations. Yeah, very, very interesting stuff. I thank you very much for joining me this morning, Jacinth, and congratulations on, on the training. And I look forward to seeing how it benefits the region in general as we go forward. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you very much. Not a problem. Do enjoy the rest of your day.